Hey guys, it's that dividend guy coming at you with another Robin Hood portfolio update. Happy Friday. Hopefully everybody's having a GGD, a great green day in the market. You know, I always wish the best for my viewers and subscribers. And speaking of subscribers, guys, we just hit 520 as of yesterday, um, which is awesome. <clears throat> and I did notice on the analytics that a lot of people that actually watch the videos aren't subscribed. So if that's, if that, uh, if that's you, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of my content. I post Monday through Friday um, um, portfolio updates and I've got other list videos. I'm going to start doing a product um, series as well. So I have plenty of content coming and you guys definitely don't want to miss that. So today we're going to go over the overall portfolio performance, my buying power, the individual stock performance, and then my watch list because I did add a couple more stocks. So jumping right in, today we are up $276.31, up 0.84% today. For the week, we are down about $300.9%. For the month, we are up $1,142.59, up 3.57% for the past month. Then the three-month mark, we're up $3,694.38, up 12.55%. Then for the year, we are up $8,340.15, up 33.64% for the past year. And then all time. Since uh, April 13th of 2018, we're up $7,461.74, up 29.07%, which is phenomenal. So I'm up 29% since I started investing, which is great. We're above $33,000, which is awesome. We have buying power of 1277, which will be going up on the 30th. We're getting paid by Altria, uh, $130. And then on the 1st, we're getting paid $82.00 by um, AT&T so we will have over $200 of buying power and that will go towards Enbridge stock. So jumping right in we are starting with Realty Income, my favorite real estate stock, dividend aristocrat and monthly payer. We've got 35 shares, $2,420.16 of market value. Average cost is $55.59. 7.31% of the portfolio is an O stock. Today we're up 236. Total we're up 474.20, up 24.37% for today. And then we've got my personal favorite stock, which needs to be beefed up a bunch because I love it so much, which is Coca Cola, dividend king here. 22 shares, $1,196.69 of market value. Average cost is 5147 3.61% of the portfolio is in Coca-Cola stock. Like I said, that could be all the way up to 20%, and I'd be happy with that. Today, we are down $1.10. Total, we're up 64.25, up 5.67% for Coca-Cola. Then we've got my insurance company for this set of months, being Allstate, who did a monster increase at the beginning of the year. We have six shares, $748.38 of market value. Average cost is $105.88. 2.26% of the portfolio is in Allstate. Today, we're up 642, up 0.87%. Total, we're up $113.26, up 17.88%. Question is, are you in good hands? Because I know I am as long as I have this stock in my portfolio. <laughs> Next, we've got Altria, Dividend King here, which dropped uh, pretty sharply, but people were asking me if I planned on selling it. No, it's going to be a very, very long-term holding. Uh, this is... Um, one of my favorite stocks uh, because they own 80% of the cigarette market. They also own 10% of Anheuser Beverage and they own a, a compelling stake in Kronos as well. So they not only, and they own a, a big part of Jewel. So they have the cigarette market down pat. <laughs> um, they have 10% of the biggest brewer in, in the country. They own a, a competing stake in Jewel. They own a very big portion of Kronos, which they plan on doing even more with that. Um, and they can do like uh, drinks with hemp in them as well. So they have other avenues besides just cigarettes that I'm really bullish on. Next, we have AT&T at above 30, which has been a while since it's been that high. Man, oh man, we got 171 for share count, $5,385.65 of market value. 
Average cost is $29.70, 16.26% of the portfolio is an AT&T. Today we are up $23.08, up 0.44%. Total, we're up 306.23, up 6.03%. And a dividend coming in of 85.80, which is not accurate. We have more than that. This is for 165 shares, but we have 171, so that dividend's already higher the next time we get paid, which is the goal. We always want to get paid more by stocks. So next we've got Procter & Gamble. This is my second favorite consumer staple stock behind Coca-Cola because of Gillette. I love Gillette and Pampers and feminine care products. They have um, hair hair gel. They have toothpaste. They just they pretty much have it all. Soap. Um, and so they are very diversified. They kind of have the opposite approach of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is like a one-trick pony, but they do it very well. Procter & Gamble has their hand in a lot of stuff, but they're and they're known, but they're not known for like a singular product. They tend to do uh, find popular products and just buy them out and then have it added to their, their list of product. So we have one share, 133.87 for market value. Average cost is 136.98. 0.4% of the portfolio is in Procter and Gamble. That will be going up. Uh, today we're down 76 cents. Total we're down 311, down 2.27%. So for me, it'd be a good buying opportunity for Procter and Gamble. And like I said, guys, um, Allstate, Procter and Gamble, and Hershey are all smaller positions that will be boosted up. My main focus is Coca-Cola for this for the first set of months, AT&T for the second, and the third is definitely going to be Enbridge because it pays so well. Next, we've got Abvi, my pharmaceutical for the portfolio. We've got 60 shares, $6,690.60 for market value. Average cost is $72.22. 20.2% of the portfolio is an Abvi. Today, we're up $87, up 1.31%. Total, we're up $2,354.24, up nearly 50, around 54%. And we do have a dividend coming in on May 14th of $78, which that will be allocated to Coca-Cola stock because that will be past um, both uh, Aflac's date. And it might be able to buy Emridge. I'll check on that before I go ahead and buy Coca-Cola with that money. But um, definitely want more Coca-Cola. <laughs> Then we've got Aflac. We've got 103 shares of this insurer, and they are a dividend aristocrat, and they did a huge 20% dividend increase the last last year. Uh, $5,496.08 for market value. Average cost is $49.12. 16.6% of the portfolio is in Aflac stock. Today we're up 4378.8%. Total we're up $437.05, up 8.64%. Then we've got Hershey. This is another my consumer staple for this set of months. Uh, they own over 80 products, and they also own icebreakers, which I wanted something for gum, um, which also uh, a stock on the watch list owns Trident, but Wrigley's is the big player in gum, and I wanted to get some exposure to that because I don't think that's going anywhere. It's one of those boring businesses that really do um, just pour in cash, which people are going to buy chocolate. It's, it's just it's a commodity. People can't really live without at this point. Um, and they own pretty much the entirety of the aisle as well, Hershey does. They're kind of like Mc how McC McCormick is with spices. Um, <clears throat> they, or, I mean, Coca-Cola too. They own Majority Steak or Marlboro with, with, um, with Altria. They own the market. Hershey definitely does when it comes to chocolate. <laughs> so I've got one share, which that will be boosted up dramatically. Love this company. 161.40 for market value. Average cost is 159.61. About half a percent of the portfolio is in Hershey. Um, I want everything to be around 10% in the portfolio, so that's going to go way up. Today we're down 84 cents. Total we're up $1.79, mm -hmm. up one point, uh, one, sorry, up 1.12% on um, Hershey. Then we've got Enbridge, we've got 100 shares of this dividend aristocrat, $3,700 of market value. Average cost is $36.28, 11.18% of the portfolio is an Enbridge. That will be going up, but eventually it will go down to 10%. I just love the dividend that it pays and the consistency of the raises that it's had. Today we're up $2, total we're up $75.25, up 2.07% on Enbridge. And that rounds up the portfolio so coca-cola 
uh, AT&T and Enbridge are going to be the focuses for the portfolio for the rest of the year. Next year, I do plan on pouring money into Allstate, of course, into Procter & Gamble and Hershey. So some of those smaller positions. But let's take a look at the watch list. So I want Mondelez because they own um, Oreos. They own Chicken and a Biscuit. They own Chips Ahoy, Teddy Grahams, and most importantly, they own Trident. So this is another play on gum for me. Um, and they do, Trident's a very big brand when it comes to gum, but Wrigley's is the number one player, and if I could just buy Wrigley's, I would instead of Mondelez and Hershey, but uh, Mondelez, I believe, is number three, and Hershey's is number four or five when it comes to produce gum gum production, so um, at $59.59, it's um, pretty close to the high, so I would want this closer to $50, so not buying Mondelez, but I will eventually. Then we've got a Lion Energy. I had this and sold it. As you guys can see, I was a dummy butt and sold $500 worth. But I'll buy more. I love Alliance Energy. Um, and in my opinion, once I get Alliance Energy and uh, I buy Berkshire, I'll pretty much have a monopoly when it comes to um, energy, when it comes to the state of Iowa, which is where I live. So people pay Alliance or um, Berkshire every month here in Iowa. So I definitely want more of that. At 56, 50, 62, it's close to the high, but I really don't care. I want this. This is what this is what uh, Buffett calls a toll booth stock. People have to pay it regardless. It's like a toll booth. In order to get electricity, you have to pay Aligned Energy here in my home state. And that means that they have reoccurring revenue pretty much guaranteed. So I want that in the portfolio again. Then we got Pfizer. I was looking at Travelers as well, but I, I want Pfizer because of the consumer products and the very large line of pharmaceuticals and i do like pharmaceuticals that's why i have abv i just bought it at a very good price um i might switch it out <clears throat> but i do really like pfizer but at 38.67 the high is uh 43.08 so a decent price here but i'd want it closer to 30 about 30 dollars if if i was being honest right around the low so i'll wait on buying pfizer but again it will add to the pharmaceuticals. It will add to some of the healthcare products, some of the consumer products, and that's what I want. So next, we've got Mercury Insurance. Again, I've owned this. This is auto insurance, and I was a dummy butt, and I sold it. So um, I'm not, I will not be doing that again. So this is my my other, say, Aflac. Just doesn't have as good a growth, which is fine. So at 64.14, 52 week high, 66, 32. 52 week lows 34 so i want this around 40 dollars a share but i definitely want to buy more mercury insurance because i want insurance to be a very big footprint in the portfolio and then of course we have berkshire so berkshire owns uh, in a mass of companies from geico <clears throat> they own national indemnity they know they own gen re which are insurance arms they also own um a lot of utilities here in iowa in my home state uh, they also own Dairy Queen, Duracell. They own big portions in Apple, in Bank of America, Kraft Heinz, Coca-Cola, American Express. Um, Berkshire Hathaway is the king of not paying dividends and me being okay with it. Um, <laughs> they know how to allocate their money to get a, a dollar for 66 cents. So they know how to value invest to the point that it's insane their overall track record is thousands of percent when it comes to running this the overall berkshire hathaway business um they have made some hiccups but everybody will uh but the the mainstays for the portfolio have become uh, apple which i love um it's the biggest company and biggest revenue generator in the world um apple they own a bunch of Coca-Cola and American Express, which I love both of those companies. Bank of America with Merrill Lynch, love that bank as well. Um, the number one thing that they did that I do really appreciate is they got rid of almost all the big banks. Uh, they cut out like JP Morgan and Chase, they cut out m and Bank, they cut out PNC Financial, and they focused on, he focused on the bank that he likes the most. So he owns a bunch of Bank of America and he owns a lot of US Bank as well. And he's more focused on Apple, which I like. So instead of uh, owning a bunch of banks, he actually switched it out for pharmaceuticals. So he actually owns, just like me, he owns AbbVie. Um, he owned Pfizer, but he sold it. Not sure why he did that. Uh, but he also bought Merck and Bristol Myers Squibb. So he owns a lot of healthcare stocks, a lot of pharma stocks, which in a lot of the Berkshire meetings, he talks about, yeah, I should just buy a basket of them, but he didn't do it until 2020, which I thought was crazy. Um, 
because he talked about it in like the early 90s and then again in the mid 2000s during the crash. So I don't know why he didn't do it earlier, but that's why I'm more bullish on Berkshire. I don't like banks. So the fact that he switched it out for something that I can understand personally, which is pharmaceuticals um, and consumer behavior as an Apple, um, I like it a lot more. So I definitely want to pour money into Berkshire Hathaway. So guys, um, for the watch list, I want to have about 15 stocks in the portfolio. So right now I have 10. So 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So I want to add um, another consumer staple with Mondelez. I want to add a Tobu stock with Alliance Energy. I want to add another pharma stock with Pfizer. And I want to add another insurance company in Mercury Insurance. And the thing is, this pays the first. So I'll have four, four, five, and six. So that's the number of stocks that I'll have paying for each month. <coughs> so... Um, I'm going to wait to buy these until they're at attractive prices, but I do want to add all of them. I want 15 total uh, companies in the portfolio. Just because I like the brands that, that they own. I like I like the the Oreo. I like I like Oreos. I like Chips Ahoy. I like Teddy Grahams, and I want Trident. I do. I really want gum to be a big portion of the portfolio. I also want my, ins my um, <clears throat> insurance and utility back. So I want... I want the utilities. I want this toll booth like stock. This is a no brainer for me. I also want more, more, um, exposure to the pharmaceuticals. And since, um, Berkshire doesn't own Pfizer anymore, I definitely want to get into a couple that they don't own. So when I buy uh, Berkshire stock, I have stuff that they don't. I want Mercury insurance. Like I said, I want that insurance footprint to go way up and this is car insurance. So they are in the same realm as Allstate. And I like, um, auto insurance more than I like property and casualty. That's why I switched it out for travelers. That's why I didn't buy Chubb and I bought Allstate instead because legally you need auto insurance. So that, that puts it, um, I, I think that makes Allstate because it, it goes State Farm, Progressive, uh, Berkshire, um, <clears throat> but they, they are car insurance and that's what I want. That those are the big players, but as as for underwriting, Travelers and Chubb are huge. They're in the top ten for the amount of policies that they write for property for any insurer. So not just auto, but I wanted auto, which is why I picked Mercury Insurance over Travelers and Chubb. Then of course Berkshire Hathaway. I can't. I, I mean I went in depth on them already, but um, I, I do. I love them and I want their companies and I like them a lot more now that they switched to to healthcare stocks. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, guys, to hit subscribe. I know a lot of you guys are watching and you comment and message me on Instagram and stuff like that. And you're really supportive. Um, and a lot of you guys aren't even subscribed. So for the people that haven't, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post Monday through Friday on my portfolio. I've got list videos coming out. I have the products of series that I want to start, which goes, which is going to go through the products like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Mondelez, Kellogg's, Kraft, Apple, Microsoft. You know, just looking at these brands and showing you guys how big they are because I think that's really important. A lot of times when people buy companies, they don't realize how big they are. Like a lot of people don't know Frito-Lay is owned by Pepsi. So Pepsi owns Doritos, Fritos, Cheetos, all that, like most of that uh, that chip aisle is Pepsi. So it's, it's just a different brand name so they don't realize that Frito-Lay is a subsidiary. So I want to help educate people um, while I'm sharing my journey because I think that will help a lot of people when it comes to trying to find good quality stocks if you don't know Frito Lays a part of Pepsi, you might not want to buy Pepsi, um, but I definitely would. So that's what I mean. Like the more you, the more you learn, the more you earn. And if I can help people learn more, then I feel like I'm doing, you know, the channel justice. Me sharing my um, my journey is part of this. You know, I want to share it, but I also want to show other people how to start it as well. So that that's part of why I want to start this series. So. That being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another Robinhood portfolio update. Take care.